Hey, it's Rich, the Louisiana Hobby Guy, and today I am back in the Laser Lab, and we are doing something completely different that I don't think I've ever seen before. And I've searched high and I've searched low on YouTube and on the internet, and I haven't found anyone that has a definitive video or tutorial on how to maximize using your materials and not waste any. So I've gotten to the point where when I have a piece of material like this black cherry wood as an example, I don't want to waste any of it. So what I've done is I actually started this, I guess about, uh, I started doing this about a year ago. You know how you have that scrap pile of wood and sometimes that pile gets really big of pieces that you've done a project, you've got all of this scrap left over and then well, you just don't use it. Well, today we're going to do something different. I'm going to show you. Uh, and if you don't, if you're not fortunate enough to have a laser like the Lasermatic, like I've got back there with the honeycomb bed that's fixed in place, it's always in the same position. Zero, zero is in the front left. And, you know, you know that you can just drop another piece on there and uh, and rework in that same area. If you're not fortunate enough to have one of those in part two of this video today, I'm going to show you or tell you how to set your laser up, no matter what it is, no matter what manufacturer it is, so that you won't waste any material with that as well. And with that, that's the end of the intro. I try and keep them as short as I possibly can. So let me show you the first thing that I've done is uh, in Lightburn, I've gone ahead and put my machine over here on the laser tab into absolute coordinates. And this is the only way that this is possible is by doing this in absolute coordinates, which you should be in any way. That's how the software is designed to be used. Most manufacturers have taken advantage of this, but yet they haven't really because they haven't set their lasers up to be used this way. Now, with the Lasermatic that's behind me, it is set up to be used this way. When you say go to zero, zero, it will be right on that bottom corner of the honeycomb ready to use. So now what I've done here, and uh, as you can see, uh, what did I just do there? I zoomed all the way in by mistake. I meant to move it like that. So what I've done here is this is a project I did a couple of days ago. Um, and it was actually like this was the file and it was a cut path. And what I did was when I was finished with the job, I went ahead and selected everything in here except for the, this is already on a tool path. It's on T1 and I put all of this onto T2. Now with all of this on T2, if we take a look at my file system, and here in the file system, you're going to see, I tried to take a screenshot here so you could see this a little better. This is where I store my light burn templates. And I'm in a folder called Shop Scrap. And you'll see that I've got a bunch of different files in here. These are all the current pieces of wood that I've got that I've used already. So now back in Lightburn with one of those files open is if you see way up at the top here i've got shop 12 here and i've also got other folders in there uh, one for a lady i make earrings for one for a laser company in new orleans that i do some uh, templates for and this is file is called shop 12. so i've taken the original file which was called the the jesus crucifixion cross and I've gone ahead and said file, save as, or you can do control shift S, which will bring up the save dialog. And I just typed in here shop 12, which was a, a, fold, a file that didn't exist before. So now I've saved this as a template in my shop scrap folder. And all of this is on a toolpath. So I know that when I start the lasermatic, it's going to go to zero, zero. And I'm just going to open this file here and this will be ready to use where I can design anywhere on this wood. And in fact, I've gone ahead and taken a logo, which I'm going to demonstrate to you. 
right here. I think I'm going to put this like uh, right up, right up here. And I don't want to waste too much of this black cherry wood. So I've got my little logo there. It's going to engrave and cut it. It won't take long, maybe about a minute, minute and a half, something like that. And I'm just going to go ahead now that that wood is off the uh, laser and it's been off for a couple of days and I've made a couple of other projects since I'm going to take this wood and I'm going to put it right back on the laser bed in that exact position where it was before. Now I use the top left corner. Most people are going to want to use the bottom left corner because that is the zero zero position. But um, I prefer to use the top left because it's closer to the exhaust. So I'm going to take and on these pieces of wood, when I get finished with the project, what I do is I put on here a note of what piece of wood this is. And there you can see this is shop 12. So this little note tells me that I can just put this back on, open the shop 12 file, and my tool paths are already going to be there. And I'll know that I can design anywhere around those tool paths. So are you ready to give this a try? <laughs> I'm going to show you live now that this actually works and it works like a dream. So I'm going to get up, go to the laser and put this on the laser bed. I probably should have put it on the laser bed first, but that's okay. So now with the uh, there you are. Now with the with the laser with the wood on the laser, I'm just going to go to a spot on the wood so that I can make sure that my focus is right and light burn. And uh, let me actually switch to the other camera here. And that looks pretty good right there. So now we've got the laser focused, it's already homed, and we're ready to run this job on a piece of material that I've done a couple days ago. And since I've done this job, I have done other jobs. So the only thing that I have to do is put the wood back in the same place, which is the top left corner in this instance, and run this job. So I'm going to run this job now, and you're going to see this is going to cut out of the top right corner of that piece of wood. Let me just jump back here for one second so that you can see where I've positioned it. This is the edge of the wood over here. I don't want to get too close to the edges. That's about three millimeters off there and five off over here. And that's enough to leave this outside part intact so that I can, again, reuse it later. So now all I'm going to do is just run this job and we'll see what we get. I can see there. <laughs> I forgot to take my sticky note off. <laughs> you definitely want to take off your sticky note <laughs> before you run this job, but it's not going to be a problem because it's not in the way. Uh, but that sticky note, I take it off and I save it for when the job's over and then stick it back on. But uh, this should be a pretty quick file uh, because I've got this running at uh, I think 20,000 millimeters per minute. And uh, it's just going to engrave that and then cut it out. And I did, by the way, make my framing tool path uh, the size of the wood. I made it shorter by about a quarter of an inch. Uh, that way I know that I'll never go off the edge. So it will be a little bit in from the edge, a little more than the five millimeters, probably you know, closer to about 10 or 15. And it's just about done. Just have to get it cut out. This is a this is going to be a material saver that you're going to be glad that you found out about because it's just so simple and fast and easy to do and it's much faster than framing or anything else. The last thing that you want to do uh, is have to position your wood and frame it. Uh, but I will show you a trick in the next part of this video, part two, where you can make that pretty easy. All right. 
So we are finished now. Let's go ahead and open this up. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave my shop tune sticky note on there for now. Let's get that off. We'll take this and just dust it a little bit. And now I am finished with this piece and as you can see this looks just like the light burn template there you can see the uh, the triangle that's cut out of the top left corner and I can still use all of the rest of this piece of wood without wasting almost anything now here is the not that this matters but I'll show it to you anyway this is the uh, final piece right here. This is the piece that I just uh, did in light burn, but that doesn't really matter. Well, let me go back to light burn now and show you what I do next. So now that I've got that job done, I'm just going to select this piece and put it on a tool path. And that's it. And now I can just hit save. And now shop 12, the template shop 12 is saved and it's ready to use for the next job that I need black jerry wood. How easy is this? And you're just going to keep reopening this file anytime you need to use the uh, black jerry wood. You open this file, you design around those tool paths, you put your wood in the same spot every time, which I'll show you for other machines in just a moment in part two and you run the job and there's no framing involved nothing there's nothing involved in this except opening a file designing setting your speeds and powers and running the job so how much easier can this get um, this really can't get any easier i don't know anyone who's done it this way by saving out templates that match the uh the notes that you put on the wood and you can even write with a pencil on the back of the wood make sure that you know where where the top or bottom left corner wherever you're going to position it is so that's it for part one quick and easy now we're going to uh, jump over to part two and i'm going to show you how to do this on any machine or i'm going to tell you anyway okay so now for part two if you're not fortunate enough and you don't own a lasermatic like the one that I've got behind me, your laser is probably most modern lasers now are going to come with a honeycomb bed, but you do need a honeycomb bed. If you don't have one, then you'll need one for this. And most of the time, the lasers that come with a honeycomb bed, they don't actually match the laser, so you don't know where to put it. So I'm going to show you exactly how to get the perfect positioning for that that uh, honeycomb bed and you will have to move it around a little bit during this demonstration on your machine I'm not going to because I'll be doing it on this machine but I'm gonna walk you through how to do this on yours so let's jump back over into light burn once again and let's take and start off in the device settings so we're gonna come up here to the device settings and we're gonna look and see what the width and the height of our laser is and you probably already know this a lot of them are going to be 400 by 400 or whatever but take note of these this one is 410 by 390. now with that done there is a new feature in lightburn right here called frame continuously and i know a lot of people haven't seen this yet so we're going to tick that on and what's going to happen is when we hit the frame button in lightburn it's going to keep framing until we stop it. We want that to happen. You don't have to keep this on all the time, but uh, for setting this up, you do need to have that on right there. So I'm just going to say OK to that now that we've changed our settings. And I'm going to come over here and grab a primitive and draw out a rectangle. Now up in the top here, you have to make sure that this is unlocked right here. And I'm gonna I'm in millimeters now. You can if you're in inches, 
Uh, you just click this little IN button, it'll go to millimeters. And I'm going to put in here, uh, I'm going to select this and do 410 and then tab to get to the next box and do 390 in there and press enter. And now I've got it the perfect size. And all I have to do is come up to the top over here and put that right in the middle like that. And you'll see if I select it, you'll see it's right there all the way around the boundary of this laser. So now that we have this on a uh, on the size of the laser bed we're going to put it on the black layer which i already have it on the black layer and it come to the uh, the cuts and layers doesn't matter going to come to the move tab and we're going to set our speed over here i've got this set for 9000 for this demonstration and all i'm going to do on the laser tab is hit frame so once i hit frame it's going to tell me there's going to be a pop-up that's going to uh, tell me to that it's framing continuously. I don't remember what the pop-up is, uh, but you're going to see it when I do this. And then I'll switch over to the other camera so that you can get an idea of what's going on. There. Press OK when finished. That's what I was looking for right there. And now on, on the laser bed, you can see that the laser is framing. And it won't stop now until I click OK. So now with the laser framing, and you do have to have the fire button on, uh, going around in a continuous frame. And this used to be an, only an option on some uh, lasers. Now the option is in light burn, so it makes it a lot easier for you to take advantage of this feature so now while it's doing this you're going to walk over to your laser and you're going to move your honeycomb until that red dot is right on the inside of that honeycomb bed and it may not take up the entire bed so you may have to figure out um, where to put it but you want to put your origin let's say your origin is the bottom left you want that bottom left corner to frame right on the inside of that frame so that it's in the perfect position. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, we'll go back to Lightburn and I will say OK to make it stop doing its framing. And it will finish up the last pass and that will be it. So now you've got your honeycomb in the perfect position while it was framing with the laser on when fr when uh, framing you're gonna you're gonna line it up right in that bottom left corner or the top left corner wherever your origin is and get that honeycomb perfectly square to that framing and now you don't want to touch it you can do this like if you have a permanent wasteboard uh, and you just burn that rectangle into the wasteboard uh, then you can line up your honeycomb on that wasteboard every time in the perfect spot. Or you can, at this point, just go ahead and get some uh, Gorilla Tape and tape it down in place without moving it. So the key thing is that once you've got it in the right position, don't move it again. Tape it down right away. And better yet, if you've got a wasteboard and your laser is affixed permanently to that wasteboard, well then you can just burn that line, that frame on the size of your work area and line up your origin to one of the corners and you'll be able to do this just the same way. Okay, so today uh, we're gonna be using a different laser now uh, instead of the Lasermatic, which is precision out of the box. We'll use the X-Tool S1 uh, which if any of you own this laser, you'll know that the honeycomb bed just sits uh, any way it wants inside that machine and there's no way to line it up. It also is not completely compatible with light burn. I had to, uh, I had to change the settings in here to 498 by 297 in order to get this to work properly where it could frame the entire grid. So, uh, yeah, problems that are inherent to all X-Tool products, they just don't work the way they're supposed to. So, which is why I don't review them. 
and why I'm not reviewing this machine. So if we take a look at this template that I've drawn here, you'll see up in the top it is 495.415 by 296.623 and using those measurements for this it actually can frame the entire work bed. Well, that's the largest it can frame, even though Xtool says it can work in a larger area, it can't in light burn. Um, we're gonna switch over to that real quick. Now you can see that I've got the camera on the S1 and I'm going to hit frame and then walk over there and show you what I do to use that bottom right corner as the point where I put all my material. So I'm gonna hit frame now and it's going to start its framing. So there you can see that it is framing off onto the, let me get over here so I can, it's quite, quite a distance away. So you'll see that it will frame right on top of this guide right here right there see that so that's not the right spot so now what we have to do is Matt they did put a hard stop on that side so that sort of helps but if I push it all the way to that hard stop you're gonna see that watch it as it comes down here it's off can you see that it's off by uh, about five or six millimeters and it's off over here so what we have to do is take, while it's framing, and if you're wondering how I got this to frame, I've, I've uh, overridden the uh, magnetic switches for the cover. So what I'm going to do is push this up, push this down, I'm sorry, first off to try and get this part lined up. And you see I'm almost there. The right side is a little out, so I have to move this up and see how that frames now. And the whole thing needs to come toward me just a little bit. So I'll pull it to me a little bit. And this does take a little work to get this set up the first time. And it's almost there. You can see it's perfect on the left side, but not on the right. So I'll try and just tilt it a little bit like that. And we're almost there. This needs to come out and Another thing I noticed too is that this honeycomb is not perfectly square, a uh, perfect rectangle. So that is perfect. That is about the best that we're going to get. The only thing we need to adjust now is on the right side. And as it comes down, you'll see the whole thing needs to move out just a little bit, which will probably screw up this measurement here, but we'll give it a try like that. And like I said, this takes a little hit and miss. Now the bottom corner is too far out. So we'll try and tilt it a little bit and see what happens. We're just gonna keep doing this until we get it perfect. And that's about as close to perfect as it's gonna get be just because this honeycomb is not a perfect rectangle. But what I'm concerned with is this corner. And as you can see, that corner is almost perfect. So I will give it just a hair more movement here. And now you can see that the corner lines up perfectly. So now at this point, let me go and stop the, uh, the framing. Okay, so our framing is done. And we know that if we take and position something in this bottom right corner, that we're gonna be able to use it in absolute coordinates now. So not getting into the software, just working on this for now. Let me turn these lights back on. There we go. We're gonna work just in this bottom right corner because this is what we've got perfectly aligned. So now at this point, I'm gonna take my, my Shop 12 and I'm gonna put it into this corner. And I know that I can use my Shop 12 template on this because it'll line up. Now, if you look carefully here, you're gonna see that if I get this right into the corner, just like that, it's perfectly aligned over here 
but it's not over here. And this is what I was telling you about where the honeycomb is not a perfect rectangle. And I've tried to uh, bend it a little bit to get it into place, but you shouldn't have to do all that with a brand new machine. So, but anyway, that little bit is not going to worry me too much because I'll just go four millimeters off the bottom with my template and then it'll be okay. Now that we've got this all set and it's in the right position, what we're going to do now is tape it down with some duct tape. And I'm just going to come over into the, on the side, on the left side, on the side, on the right side, in the, in the front over here, and just tape these down so that this doesn't move. And yeah, this can be a pain in the butt. You can use it for a while like this, but you're going to get to a point where you're going to have to take the honeycomb out to clean underneath it all of the little pieces that drop through. In the meanwhile, you know, a strong shop vac can also suck them up through the honeycomb. That would be uh, an easier way to do it. So let's now go back to Lightburn. Once we've got this tape now in place, it's permanently in place, we can go back to Lightburn and talk about the template again. All right, so back in Lightburn now, we don't want to move this. We want this to stay in the same place. And what we're going to do now is go ahead and put this onto a tool path. I'll put it on T2. Let me put it on T1 because it's easier to see. There you see that's orange now. And if I zoom in on this and right click on it, I'm going to lock selected shapes, just like that. And now we've got that tool path locked in place. So all we need to do now is to file, save as, and then in the right folder for whatever laser it is that you're using, you'll see I've got already one called design template. So we're going to call this one design template two and I'm going to hit save like that. So this is our design template two now and whatever we need to do in the future. So let's say we have a 12 inch by 12 inch piece of wood. We just need to grab a primitive over here, draw out, Hold shift and draw out a tool path, select it, lock it, come into inches, change this to 11.75 to be safe. And now we have an 11.75 tool path. So now with this tool path selected, all we have to do is hold shift and drag over this tool path and uh, align it to the bottom and align it to the right like that. And you'll see this is a little bit larger than, uh, than the actual work area in Lightburn. So you can just shrink this down uh, right there so that it fits within the bounds. And we'll put it on the blue so we know that the blue is the area that we can work in. And now you can just get to designing. Once you've made a design, and let's just pick anything over here. Let's say that we're going to do this deer head, this buck right here and we're going to uh, run this job on that machine. We know that our wood is positioned in the right spot. It will work in this entire 12 by 12 inch area. So I, I'm starting with a clean piece of wood now and I'm going to set this up as close to a corner as I can. Now, one thing about getting close to the corners is you don't want to get too close to the corners. So. Uh, you don't want the corners to break off after you remove this piece from the material. And now we're just going to run this job. I'm not going to actually run this job, but we're going to run this job. And then when the job is finished, we're going to select that, put it onto a tool path, and we're going to save this job out. We're going to go file, save as. We're going to uh, put in here a name like scrap two like that just give it a name a distinctive name and hit save and now we'll just grab our piece of wood and on the back side we write scrap two and we're finished we can take the wood off and as long as we leave this template just like this with these two tool paths you'll always be able to open this scrap two and be able to design on here again uh, let's take some more deer and bring them in here and put them up here. Now you can take and line this up really close to the one that you had earlier. So let's get it really closely lined up. Maybe I would do it something like that. 
and you know that that's gonna burn properly. Then you can add graphics when you're done with this one, put it on a toolpath, save the scrap to file again, and continue on with your work with other projects. And then when you have to, a smaller item that you need to burn, let's see, we needed to burn uh, this bird over here. We would just bring that bird in and get it to whatever size we want. And yeah, we can fit that on scrap too. So uh, I'll just do this and run the job and so on until you've used up all of this piece of wood and then you can rename this or uh, you know you if you have multiple pieces that you're working on multiple scrap pieces just name them scrap one scrap two scrap three and write it on the actual wood itself and there you go and when you finish with this burn same exact thing and then just save it out one more time so that's how you can do this on any laser it doesn't matter what it is so quick and easy anybody can do this you can do it with any laser and I hope you enjoyed part two today. So uh, that's parts one and two. You'll never waste another piece of wood again. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And I want to thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.